The tutorial on scalar fields will be divided into two parts. In this first part, we will see what scalar fields are, how to display them using display ranges, color maps, and histograms, how to split a cloud using a scalar field, and we will also see how to create new scalar fields by computing some features of the point cloud under study, the density and the roughness. And you can see here the sample dataset. And if I right click on the name of the point cloud here in the database tree, and uh, after that I click on information, I can see that my uh, sample dataset has more than 22 millions of points and that it has nine scalar fields. When I have clicked on the name of the point cloud here, the properties window just below has been populated with information about the point cloud, but also about the scalar fields. If you go further here in the properties window, you can see the scalar fields section. You can read again that we have nine scalar fields and the active one is the point source ID. So what is a scalar field? You know that each point in a point cloud has coordinates, x, y, z, which are used by, at compare, to display all the points in the display window here. And uh, if you do not have any active scalar field, all points are displayed in, in, in white. The scalar fields can be considered as attributes, attributes and they are used by Cloud Compare to colorize the points of the cloud. The scalar field, which has been displayed by default by Cloud Compare, is a point source ID. It is related to the way the data has been recorded. We are looking at airborne laser scanning data, and the region of interest in New Zealand has been uh, overflown several times. And each, each time it has been overflown, it corresponds to a point source ID or to a flight line, or to be more precise. And what you can see here, if you go further in the properties window, is that uh, Cloud Compare has uh, computed automatically a histogram. And this histogram show you, shows you how the point source IDs are um, distributed among the, among the points of the point cloud. You can see here in the interface that the values are going from 524 up to 529. If you select one of these bullets here on the right or on the left, you can decide to limit the display of the points to a given range of uh, point source IDs. I take the bullet here on the right and I move it leftward. Points will, will be colored in gray progressively and all, point, all points who are not within the range which is displayed here are colored either in gray or hidden. You can, choose an, you can choose an option here. You can choose to show the points in gray or to make them uh, disappear. What we should uh, understand is that the points still are in the cloud, but they are not displayed on the screen. If you want to extract only the points which have a, a scalar field value of 524, you, you can do that using this tool here in the toolbar, the filter points by value tool. If you click on it, you can see that the dialog box has been pre-filled by Cloud Compare with the values we have configured in the properties window. And you can decide to export the selected points or to, to split the existing cloud into two clouds, one with the points we are seeing on the screen and the other one, the other cloud with the remaining points. And which choose to keep points which are displayed on the screen here. I click export. And now what I can see is that the active scalar field still is the point source ID. But if I have a look at the histogram here, I can see that I have only one value for this scalar field and it is 524. So I can rename my cloud here and this is my flight line 524. So what do we have next as a scalar field? If I click on the scalar field section in the properties window here, I can read that the next 
available scalar field is a scan angle rank. The scan angle rank is the angle um, is characterized the position of the laser during the record. And you, you know that during uh, an airborne laser scanning uh, record, the, the laser is rotating around the axis of the track. And uh, the angles for these uh, specific sensors can go from minus 16 up to 16 degrees. For instance, again, I can use um, the histogram here, computed automatically by that compare, to select specific angles. And if I want to just consider angles which correspond to almost nadir angles, I can limit the range here and directly write minus one degree up to one degree. And I can see all points which have been recorded with a with an angle almost close, very, very close to, to nadir. So what do we have after the scan angle rank? We have the edge of flight line. So this scalar field can take only two values, zero of, or one. And one values here, if I zoom and I increase the default point size, it better, you can see here that points with a value of one are points which are very close to the, which are at the edge of the, of the flight line. We zoom, and if I, if I remove all the points which appear in gray, I have the limits of the, of the flight line. So after the edge of flight line, the next color field is the scan direction flag. If you look at the histogram, you can see that we can only have two values, zero or one, and these values characterize the, um, the movement of the sensor during the flight. Do, are we moving leftward or rightward with respect to the, to the track direction? And if I zoom on the data here, you will, you will see that if I look at the cloud from the top here, you can see here lines because during the flight, the sensor is rotating around the axis of the track in one direction and after in another direction. And the, the scan is done this way. Okay, let's go back to our original point cloud here before having a look at the next color field. The next one in the list is the number of returns. For each laser pulse, you can have several returns, several echoes detected by the sensor. And uh, if you have several returns, it means that you are looking at something quite complicated in terms of geometry. If you only have one return, you are looking at something less complicated. And if, you, if we select, for example, the points where the number of returns is larger than one here, we, we are selecting areas where we may have some vegetation. Associated with the number of returns, we also have the return number, which is the number position of the return in the laser pulse. Okay, the next scalar field in the, in the list is uh, the GPS time here. When I click on it, if I have a look, a quick look at the histogram, I can see that I have some periods of time along the histogram and that the values of and that the points are concentrated in these in these areas. If I select, for example, here using the right bullet only the first period of time and I remove all the points which are not within this period of time, I can compare all the points I, I got here with the points I, I get a um, few minutes ago in the 500, 524 flight lines. And what I can see is that all these points are the same point as the 524 flight line. So the GPS time can be a way to, to associate 
points with uh, with their flight line with their respective flight line okay the scalar field i will talk about now is very important in terms of uh, laser scanning and it is the intensity you can see here in the histogram that the values of the intensities are concentrated in the lower part of the histogram and so in the display window all points uh, seems to be to be uh, black what we have to do is to adjust the color map to to see the variations of of intensities and to do that we will uh, click here to to be able to see the color scale see the color map here and uh, after that we can adjust this color map to our data directly in the histogram here by using this these light little triangles here the white one and the black one if i move the white one closer to to the values the location of the values here i can have a better overview of, of the distribution of intensities but the gray scale is maybe not the better scale to see that so i can change also the color scale and i will choose the blue screen yellow red scale and here it appears that i have regions with low intensities mainly uh, at the bottom of the hill hills here and i also have regions with higher intensities mainly regions where where it seems to seems that we have bare soils or less vegetation okay and last but not least for the intensity i have the classification click on it and i see that the classification values go from one up to seven these values are standardized in in the in the last format specification and it means and, and one as a class means that the, an algorithm has tried to classify the points the, the points but uh, no class was uh, was deduced from the algorithm the class seven means uh, that points are noisy and uh, the class two uh, is for the ground so if i only want to select ground points i just have to go directly in the histogram here and i take the bullets here on the left here on the right and now i hide all the the points which are not from the ground i can have uh, directly the ground points and i can choose to extract grain points again by using the min max tool here the filter points by value click on it I export the remaining points and what i have here is all the grain points of my uh, original point cloud and now we will compute new scalar fields which will uh, become which will be computed on directly on the point cloud we will compute features of the point cloud. and for for that we we click here in the menu tools other compute geometric features and we will compute the roughness and the surface density here it already checked you have to know that to compute geometric features you have to specify the radius because cloud compare uses spherical neighborhoods to to compute the roughness and also to compute the surface and all other geometric features also. so i will put for example five meters as a radius i click on ok and then we'll have to wait for the results okay the calculations are complete now and you can see here in the scalar field section that we now have 11 scalar field and that the uh, and that the active one is the surface density computed with a radius of five meters and the roughness also we we have it in the list if you have a look at the surface density you you can check whether the density is the expected value or not for these acquisitions you have 
the histogram if you you want to, to make a zoom on it, you can click here in the toolbar and show histogram. And you see that you have uh, almost a 50% of the, of the point cloud with uh, more than six points per square meters. Two words about the roughness now here. You can see the roughness here. We will adjust a little bit the color scale to better see the, the regions where the roughness is uh, smaller. And uh, the roughness is quite relevant because it shows where, when the roughness is, is very low, that means that you have no vegetation or the vegetation is not uh, really dense. So this is the end of the tutorial on the scalar fields, first part.